everyone that's here and to those that have tuned in on Facebook, I'd like to say good morning. Uh, good morning to uh, the choir, Marcella and the band. Thank God for you this morning. Lord, you are so good and you are so wonderful, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
be back in the house of the Lord once again. I want to share a word with you this morning from Malachi 3, verses 6 through 10, and it reads as follows. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, sons of Jacob, are not consumed. For the days of your father, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how will we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. You say, how have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring in the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing until it overflows. It's truly a blessing to know that God void, void would not come back void. I will be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, and it reads, Now this I say, who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Let each one do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. Let us all say together, for God loves a cheerful giver. Here at New United, we have several ways that you can be a blessing to this body of Christ. You may use the tip, the gas app. You also may use the bank app, and you also may use the um, the church to come by and drop your tithes and offerings at the church office. It is all listed on the Facebook page, and we would truly be thankful for the blessings that you are able to bless this ministry with. Let's go before God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you once again, Lord. I just want to say thank you for just blessing us to see this beautiful day, Lord. As we take this time and opportunity to do just as your word has commanded us to do, to take a portion of our gifts that you have blessed us with and bless us to be stewards over, to give a portion back to you so that you may have food in your house so that your work may go forth into this world, Lord. Lord, I ask you to bless those who have a desire to give, Lord, and bless those who do not have, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to meet them at their point of need. You know the heart, Lord. We all have gifts. We all have time, talent, and our treasures, Lord. So we have something that we can give, Lord. And whatever we may give, Lord, let it be a blessing to you, Lord. In all these things, we ask your name we pray. Amen.
in the camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the name of that place is called Gilgal to this day. Verse 10 says, While the sons of Israel camped at Gilgal, they observed the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the desert plains of Jericho. Verse 11 says, On that day after the passing, after the Passover, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. Here's our verse this morning. It says in verse 12, the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land so that the sons of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate some of the yield of the land of Canaan during that year. I want to lock in on verse 12. And, and talk for just a few minutes when the manna, ah, that's a word for somebody, when the manna stops falling, when the manna, M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, stops falling. God bless our time together in Jesus' name, amen. One of the most important things I'm learning as a Christian, that we can wrap our minds around people the best that we are able to gain some understanding is this idea of what Solomon talks about in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter of seasons. Seasons. I, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. If we were in the building, I would say everybody say seasons. But I, I want you to get that. One of the most important concepts that you can begin to wrap your mind around, that you can pray and ask God for revelation pertaining to, is this idea of seasons. Seasons, what, what is a season? A season in the Hebrew is a fixed time. It is a set aside time within eternity, within the eternal realm and working of God. It is a set aside time, a decree is what the Bible calls it, that God Almighty has ordained and ordered for certain things to happen. Seasons. Now we understand seasons in terms of, of, of summer and winter and spring and fall and, and all of that is good because watch this. One of the ways that we begin to understand spiritual things is to look at things in the natural realm that have some level of correlation. So the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What I'm saying, the way that you understand heaven sometimes is to look at earth. Earthly things. My neighbor is a gardener and trying to get me to plant something in the ground the other day. He said, you can say, Reverend, it's not too late for you to stick that plant and plant it in the ground. I said, it won't be stuck by me. I said, but is it too late? She said, no, it ain't too late. And, and one thing she's saying is that you got to know when to plant. And if you wait too late, then it'll, it'll the sun and the heat and the summer and it won't grow. Seasons are important for the Christian to wrap our minds around. The Bible says that when the children of Israel were down in the Egypt land, they were down there for many years, they were down there for so long that they had become accustomed to the delicacies of Egypt. And I hope somebody understands what I just said. I just spoke to the challenge that we all have of God renewing us, becoming a new person. Listen, I wish it were as easy as a person praying a sinner's prayer and saying, Lord Jesus, save me, come into my life, I accept you. And then that's all I had to do. I wish it was that easy, but somebody know it is not that easy. Why is it not that easy, Pastor? Because the fact of the matter is that we are, number one, we're all born in sin. Number one, amen, somebody. Number two, many of us, it took us a while to come to Christ. It took us a while to come to Christ. Some of us were adults before we began to take our Christianity seriously. Now, what's the challenge in that? The challenge in that is that if when you come to Christ as an adult, that means you have X number of years of indoctrination in, in Satan's system. 
in the world system in Egypt. The children of Israel had been born into Egypt, raised in Egypt. They were accustomed to Egypt, eating Egypt's food, living in Egypt's houses, drinking Egypt's water. And so God knew in his infinite wisdom that taking them out of Egypt physically, y'all help me in here now, was not the hard part. As, as dynamic as it was, because you know, we like a good story, people of God. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. All of us love a good story. We, love, we like a good plot. We love action in movies. And as much action as it is when you read the, the 10 plagues of Egypt and how dynamic and powerful God is, darkness falling over the land and God moving with power and might and authority. And as powerful as all of that is and the strong hand of God rip, broke Pharaoh down to his knees. And we love to shout about that because I want you to know that was not the hard work. God is God. God didn't have any problem doing what God did best. God knew that the hard work was not going to be to watch this. The hard work for God was not getting Pharaoh to let them go. Ooh, watch this, y'all. The hard work was for them to let Pharaoh go. Oh, somebody, fuck if I just said something right there. That way I know I'm not preaching. go home. I, I need to repeat that. Get that on social media. The hard work was not God getting Pharaoh to let them go. It's not hard for God to get the devil to let you go. The hard work is for you to let the devil go. I'm preaching. You say, why? Pastor, why is that hard? Because let's be real. The world has a way of offering you some good stuff. Say so when you become a Christian, one of the first things that most young Christians deal with is boring. What can you do? Got to give up this, and got to give up drinking, and got to give up. And then if, if whoever's leading you to Christ, depending on how they teach it, they give you a whole list of do's and don'ts. Don't tell you the fun part of it. And especially if you're a young girl person, you say, I don't know if I want to be a Christian or not. It looks like it's more fun in the world. And so the, the work, believe it or not, people of God, the hard work is not getting Pharaoh to let you go. It's getting you and I to let Pharaoh go. It's not getting the world to release us. It's convincing us that we need to let go of the world. Herein lies the story this morning, people of God. The children of Israel, uh, when they first left Egypt, you remember the story? When they first left Egypt, uh, and they, they complained to Moses, and they said, Moses, uh, you know, Egypt, the food was good, you know, and, and they took care of us, and now what, what are we going to eat? And Moses prayed to God, God said, look, I will feed you manna. What is this? I will, I will free feed you bread from heaven and water that will come from a rock, a rock, and I'll feed you. And, and, and they got out there, and, and then look, this is, this is the nature of people if we're not careful. When they first ate the manna, they complained about it. Oh, they lost their complaining, right? They didn't like it. And, and they got out there, and after many, many years, they became accustomed to manna. Oh, I just said something, two, three points, and I'm done for the day. Manna was never meant to be their permanent source. That's right. How many of us have been hooked on what's temporary? How many of us have gotten comfortable in something? You ever uh, take your car and, and you go get your car and, and maybe you go get a service and, and then they give you a loan of car and then after about depending on the bonus car, and, and, and then depending on your car, after three or four days, you start liking the bonus car. Amen? Or you rent a, rent a car, and you go on for a week after three or four days, you, you go home and tell me, oh, I think I'm going to keep this car. Some of us have gotten accustomed to rent a grace. That ain't the real grace, that's the rent a grace. 
That's not the real blessing. That's the real blessing. That's the temporary blessing. But some of us have gotten so accustomed to that that we don't want to go give it back. And God said, if you give me that back, I'll give you something even better. And you fighting with God. Who am I preaching to this morning? Maybe they on social media. Stop fighting up with God about something that he just rented for you right now. That's a loan you fighting over. That's not the real blessing. Give it back. The Bible says quickly that when they uh, crossed over to the, to the promised land, chapter 5, they are uh, on the banks of, of, of Jericho. If I had time, I'd talk about Jericho. And I would let you know what Jericho stands for. Jericho is the opposite of Jerusalem. Jerusalem represents a spiritual place. Jericho represents a secular place in the lives of people. And they are on the banks of, of Jericho. And God says, look now, you can't continue to do things the same way and get the same victories. The Bible says that as they were in camp uh, the night uh, before the Passover, that they observed the Passover, the remembrance, and God says that for the first time in their lives, they ate from the land of, they ate the food of the promised land. They ate the food of the promised land. They experienced the food of the promised land. They ate what the, they ate from their future and from their inheritance. And the Bible says from that point on, the manna ceased from flowing. Who am I preaching to? Five more minutes and you can go home for the day. But God is trying to tell somebody that, that whatever it is that you have been dependent on, whatever it is that has carried you this far, that is getting ready to cease from flowing, not because God ain't good, but because God has something better. And that manna that you were eating was temporary. It was no, no different than a rental car. It was something that was to carry you until you got what God wanted you to have. And the manna ceased. Who am I preaching to this morning? The manna has stopped. What's, what manna, Pastor? Sometimes we get dependent on other people. They become our manna. They become our manna. Moses had become a source of manna. That's why Moses did my this. That's why Moses did not cross over into the promised land. It was not so much because Moses struck the rock. It was because they had lifted Moses up to idol status. They had lifted Moses up to like being a little god. And God said, no, there be no other gods before me. You're not going to have any more God, so Moses is not going. And so if you read Joshua chapter 1, the first thing the scripture says, Moses, my servant, is dead. And it's a transition that, that's taking place. And, and what God has done in many of our lives, oh, help me, y'all. God has taken out, God has removed Moses, and God has stopped the man. Who am I preaching to? Moses is no longer with you. What, what is your Moses that you were depending on while you were eating? Maybe it was a person. Maybe it was a situation. Uh, uh, whatever it was, Moses is not there. And the man, oh, I'm talking to somebody. Your Moses is no longer there, and your manner has stopped falling. When that happens, folk confused. Say, well, what am I supposed to do now? Well, why, why did that happen? God said, it's because you in the promise land. Two things that we've done for today. Uh, they go over, the Bible says that, that the manner stopped flowing uh, at that, that, that the moment they crossed over. Two things that, number one, we have to relearn how to rely on God. Watch this. That's a nugget. Relearn. Some of us have to relearn some stuff. Relearn means I learned it before, now I need to learn it again. Some of us know from experience that God is a provider. Yes. Talk to me now. Some of us grew up where we didn't have much. Some of us come from families and situations where your mother, your grandmother, whoever raised you, they had to scrape food together. Yet you ate every day. Some of us, God, we, we knew back then that it was God who was taking care of us. 
But then as we became older, uh, we progressed through life, and God, God, and God blessed us, and God showed favor on us, some people forgot, or we forget, that it was God. And so for some folks, what God is doing, deacons, is that we're having to relearn to rely on God. Because we can't depend on these jobs. Say amen, somebody. You can't depend on other people. It, it ain't going to be what it be. Moses was in the last chapter of your life. The manna that failed was in the last chapter of your life. Now you in a new season. Help me talking here this morning, God. So we have to learn how to rely on God. Number two, watch this, is that we have to refocus. Now you got to refocus. Now you can't focus on what God has already done. Now you got to focus on what God is trying to take you to. Right. You, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but it's the best thing that ever happened. Even this church. Can't focus on what happened 20 years ago. I was here 20 years ago too, but guess what? We ain't going back. Now God is saying you got to focus. On going forward. No more shouting about how it was. Oh, I missed the symptoms. Well, good. You ain't going back. Hope you had fun. 80s was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Because you ain't going back. God said, now we got to focus on our future. Because you can't eat by looking back. There is no manna back there. God said, if, long, if I would have kept giving manna, those folks never would have eaten from the promised land. Watch this, his last nugget. Here's the difference. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God fed them every day. All they had to do was wake up, they yawn, they wake up, go outside, look around and stretch a little bit. That was no work, no effort on their part. All they had to do was go outside and whoop that is. That's what man I mean. That is. Now, if you read Joshua, they had to toil that land. They had to put their faith into action. And I don't know who God is talking to this morning. That the Bible says to just live by faith. And what God is trying to raise us up to during this COVID and this pandemic season, the Christian church, is not to rely on anybody but God. And to grow as believers and understand that there are some things that God will do for you, but there are other things you gonna to have to do for you. And God will bless what you do. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm done for this morning. One of the most important things that you can learn is to recap is seasons. Understand seasons. Success is tied to Seasons. Miracles are attached to moments. Why you say that, preacher? Because there are a lot of frustrated Christians saying, I'm working hard. You can work hard, you should work hard, but if it's not your season, it's not going to happen. Two weeks later, you can be the same hard-working Christian and then everything just over. You say, what did I do different? You didn't do anything different. It was just your season. It is important for us as believers to understand seasons, timing of God. Moses, that was in the last season, whoever your Moses was, God did not allow him to comfort you right now. Whatever your source of manna was, it is not no longer available. Why? Is it because God is mean-spirited? No, it is not. It is because God wants us to take advantage of, to be fruitful in, to be productive in where God has us right now. And God knows that as long as the manner of yesterday, as long as yesterday's prayer still work, as long as yesterday still work, we're not going to do what we need to do. But God says, I got a plan for that. I'm going to make sure that my people will call my name and they're going to have to learn to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then they're going to learn that watch this. The meal may have changed but the chef was still the same. So it really didn't matter if we had a different meal as long as God is doing the 
took it. Help me in here, somebody. And what you're going to learn is it's still the same God. There's not two gods. Here, O Israel, what? Saints, the Lord your God is one God. Because one God, God has changed. Church may not be what it was in the shifting, but it's still going to be the same God. Your job may not be the same, but God will be the same. School, when the kids go back, will not be the same, but guess what? God is still the same. It's a different meal. We do a live stream, but it's still God. Listen, there's a shift that's going on. And Moses and the manna of the wilderness are no longer available. And it is important for us as Christian people to number one, understand the seasons, and then number two, to connect to the spirit so that the spirit can connect us to the source. And our new manna is going to be better than the old manna. Because the, because the cook is still the same. God has changed. Listen, as I pray, see, come on back and we get ready to dismiss. If you don't know Christ, get a free pardon of your sins, social media. You want to join this church, send us an email, office at New United. We'll take you in virtually. But listen, if you're not connected to God, it is important that you connect to God as soon as you can because there's no other help. There's nobody else we know. Listen, if you're discouraged, keep your faith in God, people of God. Keep your hope in God. God I don't believe, church, that God is done yet. See, I don't know about you, but God told me, said, I'm not done with you yet. Listen, that's why I know we're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay if God said, I ain't finished with you yet, boy. said, you're going to make it because I'm not done yet. When I say you're done, you're done. Listen, we got work to do. We got work to do. We got work. The storm, I don't like ocean. We got work to do. The young folk out here, they don't have hope and direction. We need to tell them as the Christian church, be a loud voice and let folks know that the blood still works, that prayer still works, that God is on the throne. Let's continue to pray for the Sanders family. Uh, let's continue to pray for Deacon James Grayson, who's lost.